No matter how secure you are with your personal information, you are bound to run into some type of scam that is looking to get a hold of your hard earned cash. The good news is, no matter how hard people try, if you look for a couple of crucial things, you can identify these before it gets too far out of hand. While many think there is no way someone would ever come after them, this is the type of thinking that leads them to letting their guard down and falling victim. Today, I wanna to go over a few things that you can do to increase your awareness so that you don't fall victim to the multiple scams that are out there. At the end of this episode, you will know a few things to look for, but I do also give you some extra things to increase your protection. Let's jump in. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. How's it going? Hopefully everyone's having a great weekend. I'm going to start off because it is nice and chilly. I do have on this financial mirror little jacket, little lightweight jacket, wear around the office, wherever you're at. Go ahead and pick you up one, thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop. Head on over there and grab you one of these jackets, shirts, whatever it is that you want. Go and pick that up. Thank you for joining me on The Financial Mirror as we continue to improve the one thing you can control yourself. If this is your first time joining in, I do not always start off with going to get a jacket. I just thought I would do that since I was wearing it today. And I've never, I don't think I've ever worn this on the on the stream before so why not uh, if you are on youtube don't forget to hit subscribe to be notified of all the new episodes as they release if you are listening on a podcast platform of your choice don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast apple Podcasts does allow for written comments so go on over and put in your written comment just to tell everyone how much you love the financial mirror and how much is helping you improve your personal finance journey. Spotify and Apple both allow five star reviews. So go on over, hit the five stars and that goes a long way in getting this information out to more and more listeners. So with all that out of the way, I hope you are having a great weekend. I hope that your week is starting off great for those that are listening on the podcast. Last week, I let everyone know that me and my wife had gotten married and the past few days of us in our marriage have been nice and snowy. This is not actually a picture of us, but this is how we feel coming from Hawaii, that this is uh, obviously this huge, uh, what we consider a lot of snow, you know, obviously me from Alabama and her from Hawaii, this is um, seems like a lot, but it's been a great time. We've been getting acclimated to our new environment and uh, we've got our fireplace going, got the dog out in the snow. Uh, most of all, we got to go out and enjoy some good ramen to bring the cold weather in. It's just been a great time uh, with the weather. And ultimately, we, we're loving our new home. We're, we're loving the neighborhood we're in. This has all been uh, a great, a great move. But with all of that being said, with all this good stuff, I want you to know that out there and around us is plenty of bad. There's plenty of bad. There's plenty of people that want to come after you, uh, want to come after me and, and all the hard earned money that we have. So uh, I want to tell you that there are many scams out there and that's kind of where I wanted to start because it's going to be a special episode today because it kind of hits close to home for many people. Most people know of someone that has fallen victim to a scam. Uh, maybe it was you, maybe it was one of your family members, maybe it was a friend, a coworker. Um, it's, it's not uncommon, right? It's truly not uncommon. And I think that's what is is so uh I, I I guess so like like weird about it is that it's not uncommon, but when it happens, it's like, wow, I can't believe that this happened. But it, it really and truthfully is, is is very common to happen. And I want to cover some of those different scams that are actually trying to get you to to give up some of that hard-earned cash that you have earned. Now 
I want to say this, this is a very lucrative business because there's really no cap in someone's earning potential when they are doing this type of uh, financial scams out there. One successful scam could be $200 or it might be $20,000 or it might be $200,000. We don't really know because it really depends on the person. It really depends on the person that they were able to scam. If they were able to scam someone that had $200,000, well, guess what? Probably all of that money is gone, right? And that's what we have to think about when we look at this. That's what the, the real thing is, is we've got to look at just how lucrative this is and why people are doing it. This is what is keeping its popularity continuing to increase. And it's going to continue and increase because of the simple fact that people are vulnerable. People are, there's so much information that's constantly being thrown at us that people are vulnerable. Now, the part of these scams is that uh, you'll hear this term TTPs or, or tactics, techniques, and procedures. They're ever evolving. They continue to change. And it can sometimes be hard uh, to, for us to, to keep a continuous grasp on what exactly we tell people to look for, right? What exactly we tell people to look for. But what I want to cover today are some super common trends, and they can help you actually prevent yourself from being scammed. If you will follow just these simple principles, I am confident that you will be on your journey to not falling victim to some type of scam uh, that's out there, right? A financial scam could absolutely set you so far back in your finances. You could end up having your bank account emptied with no way to get this money back. And that's a true statement. And the reason why that is, is because when an actor gets a hold of your cash, they're not going to just leave it like, oh, I'm just going to, it's not like I'm transferring my money to you. And then when I tell, when I call my bank, it's like, oh, I didn't do that transfer. They call the bank that I transferred it to, and they're like, oh, well, my bad. Okay, well, we'll send it back, and they send it back. That's not the way actors in this field work. They're gonna take your money. They're gonna go up and just buy a ton of Bitcoin with it, and it's not gonna be trackable, right? Like it's not gonna be trackable. Uh, that's sort of how this whole thing goes. They're gonna move it all around till it's just untraceable, and you're not getting your money back, right? More than likely, you're not getting your money back. So another thing that this could do is this could create a lot of back end work for you, right? Notice I said you have to call your bank and then that bank has to work with this and they have to find the money. There's a lot of work that you're going to have to do if you fall victim to one of these scams, right? If you fall victim. So I want to end this episode with you having a great strategy that you can use to try to identify these things. Now, I'm going to lead with this. Because you have, to, I have to say it, but there is no exhaustive list of things that you can look for. What I can tell you is that if you will look for what we're going to cover today, you will be in the best position possible. You will be better than most, right? Like you're going to be better than the average person. And when we think about, you know, people in this this uh, financial scam industry, they're going to go towards the lowest hanging fruit. They don't want to go after somebody that is 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 holding them up that is wasting their time that is doing all these things they don't want to go after those people they want to go after the people that's just going to give them what they want and keep going so the harder you make it for them that's obviously step one if you can make it really hard for somebody they are not going to to go after you it, it, it goes back to any type of of cyber security threat right if you like Every industry out there, and I'm and I mean this when I say it, every single business out there, from our our Meta, Facebook, whatever we call them now, to YouTube, to Twitter, to uh, Google, to, to all these people, they are vulnerable somewhere, right? They're vulnerable somewhere. They have a vulnerability that someone could expose. Every single one of them. You're no different. You have a vulnerability that someone can expose somewhere. You have a vulnerability. The part is, is that those companies make it extremely hard for someone to take advantage of it. And when you make it hard, people are just going to be like, oh, that's not worth my time. I'll go after the, the little fish, right? The little fish that make it easy. And if I catch enough of them, I'll eat for a lifetime type of thing. So I'm going to start this off with a story. So I was informed of a story 
and someone received a correspondence from a company and they were saying that they were going to get charged if they didn't if they didn't call a support line and cancel the subscription right but when that phone call was made they were directed to a website and on this website was a cancellation form makes perfect sense right makes perfect sense on this form though there was a link to download something this thing that was downloaded happened to be a remote desktop application. What does that do? Well, this allows someone to see your screen in its most simplest form, right? And this isn't all bad. Like a remote desktop application is not all bad. Now in the purposes of, of you know, this need, needing to be done for a cancellation of a subscription, pretty bad. But remote desktop applications in and of themselves are not bad. You use remote desktop applications to do some, some diagnosing of computers like miles away like in a in a big corporation like the help desk maybe use a remote desktop application to help their their employees fix little problems without having to get up from their desk every single time right but in this case this was used for harm which isn't good now once the remote desktop application was installed this con artist wanted the individual to log into their bank account now why is that a big deal well there's a good chance that there's a key logger being used, which all that does is, is captures every key you press on your keyboard. And there, that would be used to possibly retrieve a username and password. But at, in the worst case, maybe they just get an account number and a zip code and they all of a sudden, you know, can, can take money from an account, right? Create some type of, um, some type of, 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 a mutual trust between two accounts and then they start moving money. So the great part about this is that th this story ends well, like this story ends with exactly, and, and I'm telling this story because I want you to, to see how you can, you can look for things along the way. But if the second that you, that you realize something fishy is going on, you have the ability to stop it. So this one ends well, because this individual felt something was off, just felt a little weary about it. And so they got off the phone completely and they never exposed themselves. And this is a success story, right? And this is the, this is where I want every single listener of the financial mirror to be, because I don't want you to, to end up letting your guard down to the point where you get taken advantage of. And that's, and I bring up that story for that. It, it, this shows you how important it is to always be on the lookout because people want to take advantage of you. They want you to let your guard down and then they want to take, they want to expose you for it. So what could you do further up in this story? There's tons of red flags. Maybe you caught them, maybe you didn't, but what can you do so that you don't get taken advantage of that would end up potentially leading to a total financial meltdown for you? What do you do? So the first thing that you do is you need to understand what social engineering is. You need to understand what social engineering is because this is the core of what is going on here. Social engineering at, at the, the, the basic definition is you're, you're deceived into doing something. That's practically, and in, in, like I said, basic, there, you can, there's tons of ways to think about it. In its basic form, you're deceived into doing something. With social media, this is becoming so predominant in today's culture, right? I can simply look up your profile. I can see what you do in your spare time. I can see where you work. Uh, I could see, you know, where you spend, you know, most of your time or where you spend, um, where you just came back from vacations or whatever. All of these things are giving me ammunition to take advantage of you. All of that is giving me am ammunition to take advantage of you. The thing is, is that social engineering can be easy to fall for. If you worked in an industry and you helped animals and I called you and was like, hey, you know, you maybe you work for like a, like a dog shelter or something, an animal shelter. And I called you like, hey, you know, this is so-and-so from a nearby animal shelter here. Uh, I have this dog and I need to drop it off with someone. Can I get your name and number uh, so I can get in touch with you when I get closer or whatever? Like I can create a whole story. If I know enough about you, I can create a story and you may be convinced to fall for it. You may be convinced to give me information. You may be convinced for me to deceive you into doing something or giving me something that I need to take another step forward. What if you just got back on back from vacation from like England or something, right? 
and I called you and I told you something about England. You may be convinced to get out of your comfort zone, right? Maybe I saw that you stayed at this specific XYZ hotel and I'm like, hey, you know, this is, uh, I've got your, I, I, you drop something and, and I've got it. I just want to make sure it's yours. Can you, can you give me your name and your number? And uh, I, I noticed you, you stayed at this hotel and, and, and I made that believable. All you did was post this like selfie with you in the hotel in the background saying, I'm loving my stay, blah, blah, blah. Right. But I'm able to take that and deceive you into giving me something I want, right? I, I'm using all this. Now, all this isn't to scare you, but it, it, it wor- it's real and, it's, and it works, right? That's the reason why it's so successful. But ultimately, their goal is to directly, it, it could be to directly target at you, but I want you to also remember that some of these are sent out in the masses. It takes a lot of work. Remember I told you the idea is to not have to do a lot of work to get these to, to be successful. So maybe they just want to send it out in the masses. If I sent out something and I said, hey, I am going, here is a free vacation and I'm just going to send it to a thousand people and you you get this vacation because uh, you bought a car in the last six months, right? I just created something. Now, I sent it to a thousand people. How many people in that thousand bought a car last month? Or this in the last six months? I don't know. Maybe 25% of them, maybe 10% of them. Well, guess what? Out of all I'm doing is sending it to a thousand people, and I'm hoping that 10% have bought a car in the last six months. That gives me a hundred people that I have the potential to deceive. All I did was send something out. It's not applicable to everybody. Maybe you look at it and you're like, I didn't bought bought a car in the last six months. This is fake. And you throw it away. It doesn't matter. There's a hundred people out there that it worked on. Now, Some of them are going to see that it's fake and they're going to figure it out. But all you need, remember I told you one person could be 200 to 200,000, right? Like one person, you just need one, right? Just one. So if we can get to that, all of a sudden, everything gets easier. And that's what they're going for. So that's sort of what social engineering gives. That's a good background. So what can you look for to make sure that you don't fall victim? What can you look for? Well, the first thing that you can look for is you can look for bad grammar. The number one thing that constantly shows up is bad grammar. Right here on the screen, you can see, and I'm going to read this out loud so the people on the podcast can can sort of get it too, but I've just got this email, right? And all it's talking about is this Yahoo account that's going to get closed, right? And all they want you to do is go and do whatever, uh, provide us this information and they're they're asking for username, password, date of birth, and country or territory. All they're asking you, if you'll send us that, we won't close your account. But read some of these sentences that I've underlined in red. Okay? Read some of the sentences. Uh, account user, right? Account user. Uh, this is, is not, you know, is not... Uh, um, it's not, it's, it looks weird, right? It looks like attention account user, right? Like, why would, why would Yahoo start something with attention account user? Wouldn't they know who I am? They, I mean, you don't think they would know who I am? I'm, I'm you know, that, that, that's the first thing. And then they're asking for a username. Don't they know that I'm a user, right? So keep reading and read this next part. Due to the anonymous registration of Yahoo accounts, so we are shutting down some Yahoo account, and your account was among these to be deleted. That is terrible grammar, right? Not saying that you don't understand what it says. It's just terrible grammar. We are sending you this email so that you can reconfirm your account information to enable us upgrade your account from being deleted. You see how bad that is? (laughs) Like, it's actually hard to read. If you are still interested to use your Yahoo account, kindly reconfirm your account. Terrible grammar, right? Terrible grammar. Now, that's what you want to look for. You want to look for something that is really bad. This is this is not pointing out that uh, you'll hear a lot of people, you know, talk about the the bad grammar and all that. But what I'm trying to say is that this is Yahoo. This is a multi-million dollar company. You don't think that they have millions of dollars to put into great correspondence to their customers that 
allows them, I don't know, to create well-crafted messages. <laughs> that That's the part that I, you know, it just, it gets me. Attackers, they're not going to spend millions of dollars on these messages. They are going to rely on you to overlook these like little baby mistakes and fall for their trap. Now, that's only the first thing. Bad grammar, bad sentence structure, all of those things, missing punctuation, improper, you know, sentences, whatever, bad, bad English, bad, whatever. All of that is being done so that you overlook it and you miss it. Right, right? Like I could read that and my brain is gonna read it normal. We are shutting down your Yahoo account and you're we are shutting down ya some Yahoo accounts and your account is one of those to be deleted. Like I may like translate it in my head to make it read normal, but if you read it for what it is, we are sending you this email so that you can reconfirm your account information to enable us upgrade your account from been deleted. Not from being deleted, but if I read it fast, I may I may overlook that. But they're not going to spend attackers are not spending millions on these messages. They were going to rely on you falling for their trap by overlooking these basic mistakes. Now, the other thing to look for in the wording is that they're normally written to create urgency. In this one that I've got on the screen, you can see it says warning account owner that refuses to update his or her account after three days of receiving this warning will lose his or her account permanently, right? So it's kind of like saying, hey, if you don't do this in three days, you're losing it. They want to create some urgency. They want to create you to, to not think you need to act right now. So when, when that kind of pressure comes, it may lead you to not actually thinking about what you're doing, just doing. And that's kind of that's kind of what uh, what they're trying to accomplish here. Now, that's the first thing to look for. Bad grammar, urgency, things of that nature. The other thing that you need to be on the lookout for is abnormalities in email addresses, links, and domains. So right here on the screen is a message from Bank of America. And podcast listeners, don't worry. I'm walking through all these uh, um, through audio as well. But this is an email from Bank of America. But if you look at the email address that the, the email comes from, it's an at comcast.net email address. Now, this is just, you know, for, for giggles, but uh, this is kind of the stuff you want to look for, right? Because if Bank of America is, you know, also has tons of money, and if you got an email from Bank of America, you would expect it to come from an at, you know, at least something that looks like Bank of America, not Comcast. Comcast is a is a internet service provider. I think it's just in the southeast. But anyways, that's a com that's an internet service provider, not a bank. Why would I? Be, why would Bank of America be sending something from a Comcast email, right? I mean, I'm not I'm not even a million dollar company as the Financial Mirror. But if you get an email from me, my email is from at thefinancialmirror.org. Like that's my domain, right? That's that's just the way it is like bank of America has way more money than me. I'm pretty sure they can afford a domain and they obviously own a domain. Now that's the first thing to look for is you're looking to see some type of discrepancy in the from box. Also the to box, the to box, if it's sending this to a member, it should come to you. It should be to you. They should know who you are, right? Uh, the other thing right here is that if you hover over a link like this link at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.bankofamerica.com, if you hover it over it, look at the link is actually taking you to HTTP, which is not a, a secure site bit.do forward slash G H S D F H G S D, right? That's where it's sending you. Bank of America links should go to bankofamerica.com, which is what it says right there. Why does it not go where it says it goes? These are abnormalities in links. The Bank of America and Comcast thing is an abnormality in an email address and domain. They should all match. Look for that kind of stuff. Uh, you can do this first by looking who the message, message is from. That's the easiest way. Uh, if this is like a snail mail type thing, this is much harder, but the next step will cover some basic things to look for in snail mail. So that next thing, you need to not download anything, Google everything, okay? Don't download anything, Google everything. Not downloading anything is the first step, okay? 
no company should have you downloading something for almost any reason, right? Many emails or snail mail will have a link to some URL that'll send you somewhere to download something. That could be a desktop, a remote desktop application, a key logger, malware of some type, whatever it is, don't just go there and download it. The number one thing you can do is Google everything. And I say that because many social engineering efforts, specifically phishing attempts, if you'll Google it, Google it, there's a good chance that someone else has already done it. Someone else has already fallen for it or someone else at least has listed it somewhere. That's a good first step. The other thing you can do is if a phone number does come in, maybe you just go Google that phone number and see what that phone number shows up as. That might show up as a scam, but that might show up as, you know, if you received an email with a phone number from SunTrust Bank, maybe it shows up, hey, this is SunTrust Bank. Well, now you say, okay, well, let me go to Sun. This is the next tip. Go to SunTrust Bank, Google SunTrust Bank, go to their domain is going to be the top one. I guarantee it on a Google site, on a Google search. Maybe see if that number is the same. If it is, call it and say, hey, did you send this to me? Just validate, just validate. Maybe they say, no, we didn't. Uh, that's something else. Well, now you can fix it. Now you have a chance to stop it. And that's the part that I want you to think about. But the good thing is, is that if you are worried, always just look up whatever company it is, right? If it's if it's McAfee, if it's uh, Facebook, if it's YouTube, if it's Google, if it's your broker, if it's a bank, if it's whoever, look, if you're always worried, look up that company, all their customer service number, don't ever call the number on the actual correspondence, the email or the, uh, the paper mail or whatever, right? Just call the customer service. Now, don't download anything, Google everything, figure out what it is you're doing and you will be okay. The next thing is that you, that you should do to protect yourself is don't do anything with money unless you're a hundred percent confident that it's going where you meant it to go. Think about this. If money gets into the hands of someone, there's a good chance you're never going to get it back. If that, if the mail is, is a lie and they're just trying to get you to take some kind of action, you receive something in the mail and they just try to get you to take action, just wait it out. If that is a real transaction and it actually goes through like an automatic draft or something like that, if it goes through, just call your bank, say, Hey, I didn't authorize this charge. Your bank will help you get your money back. They'll be able to help and see, uh, who that money went to. And you're more likely to be, you know, to, to get your money back. If you get caught with the money going to a hacker, if you'll go that route, you're much more likely to get the money back. Uh, normally speaking, hackers don't actually have access to your bank. They normally just say it, and that's how uh, they, they deceive people, right, through social engineering. But one more thing, if, if that's, if that's you know, you're still a little uncomfortable, another thing you can do is get on some type of identity theft protection. For me and my family, I use Xander Identity Theft Protection. Uh, that'll cost you $12.90 a month, worth it. Every single penny is worth every dime you throw at it. Uh, for an individual, it's six seventy five dollars a month. Um, and that's kind of the route that I would take is something like that. I'm not paid by Xander. Uh, I am a, a Dave Ramsey financial coach. So that's where I got originally hooked up with Xander, but I've never... Uh, had any problems with them great to work with so i would i would definitely tell you that's, that's a good place to start but twelve dollars and ninety cents a month and it's worth it every single bit of it if something happens they're going to work to get everything cleaned up for you they're going to get your life back on track and back to normal they offer different insurance under that uh that can help you get you know get money back if you are uh, somehow caught up in some type of identity theft protection or identity theft uh, issue uh, but other than that, like that's kind of where I want you to be. That's kind of where I want you to be. But as you can see that this is something that is is constantly growing and you could easily be called up running into a financial scam and it could set you back, you know, months or years on your house down payment, on your savings goal or whatever other financial goal you've been working on. The important thing 
to think about is always be ready. You, the second you let that guard down, you will find that these little attacks may sneak into your life. And that's something that you do not want to happen. You don't want that to happen. You never want to let your guard down and a little money get, get lost for the simple fact that you just stopped looking. You said it won't happen to me. You, you know, it, it, it's just, it's just how it works. It's how it works. But identity theft is growing. Financial scams are growing. Uh, different kinds of fraud is growing, but that's, that's the, the world we live in and we've got to be aware of it. Now, this is all stuff that is, is not a hundred percent preventable. Everyone has a chance of falling victim. And I want to say that, but what you can do is these little basic steps to try to prevent that from happening to you. Be a little, be the, be the hardest fish to catch, right? Remember that. Not saying that there's not vulnerabilities in your life, just be the hardest fish to catch. Make it hard on that person. But speaking of personal finances, speaking of all of these things, I want to help you take control of not just your online identity, not just prevent you from being caught up in a financial scam, but I want to help you with your current personal finance journey. Ensure you're on the right track to getting to where you want to be. If you could just head over to thefinancialmirror.org and hit book now, we will get your free consultation scheduled and that will get us just 30 minutes, 20 minutes, somewhere roughly in that time frame to sit down and talk about your financial journey and how I may be able to help you. As I started with, if you do want to give us a little extra dose of support here at The Financial Mirror, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop, pick you up some gear and that truly helps grow the organization that we are getting here with financial coaching. I appreciate every single person tuning in today, and I hope that you walk away with tons of information that you can use to not get caught up in a financial scam. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share this with all the people in your life, and I appreciate the people on Facebook, YouTube, podcast, wherever. If you are on podcast, leave a five-star review, written comment. Both those go a long way. Till next week, continue improving the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's Financial Mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves, change our mentality, and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives.